Victory is a gift from God, but the responsibility to walk in that victory is ours. Is somebody hear what I'm saying to you? Verse 60 and verse 12, the New International Version. What does it say? With God, we will gain the victory and he will trample down our enemies. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Finally, let's look at the book of 1 Corinthians and chapter 15 and verse 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. I want to look today at these subjects are three undeniable requirements for victorious living. Three undeniable requirements for a victorious life. Three undeniable requirements for victorious living. I want you to get set because God will speak for his word that will bring a transformation into your life in Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear a better amen? amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and when your light shines, nothing can stop it. Let your light shine upon our spirits again today. Let there be an illumination and transformation in our spirits. We give you praise and we receive your word. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Somebody who loves Jesus, shout a good amen. amen. Shout a good amen. amen. Two passages of scripture there first. It says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to see again there. It says that thanks be to God who gives. Somebody say gives. Somebody say gives. He didn't say who gave the victory. He said who gives. It's a present and continuous tense. Is that not correct? That means God has given it to us, but it's not just a once and for all victory. It's, he says who gives. So he has given it to us, but he continues to give us victory. Praise God. That word settles any kind of challenge you are facing right now or anyone you might face in the future. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? God has made provision for anything you are facing right now and has also made provision for any kind of challenge the enemy might bring your way in the future. He says, who gives us the victory? So for anything you are facing right now, there's a victory waiting for you. Can I hear a better amen? amen? For any challenge you are facing in your life right now, there's a victory already programmed by God for you. You will receive it this time in Jesus' mighty name. And I can, hello, can I announce to you that if there's any challenge that the enemy will bring next year, there's already victory for you in Jesus' mighty name. He said, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ? So it is settled once and for all. He has given it to us, but he has made provision. It's a continuous victory. For the battles you may have to face tomorrow, God has already given you the victory. For the battles you may have to face next year, he has already given you the victory. You will never be defeated in Jesus' mighty name name. I said you will never be defeated in Jesus' mighty name. I also like that scripture in the book of um, Psalm chapter 60 and verse 12, the New International Version says, through God we will gain the victory. Through God we will what? Gain the victory. In other words, some victory for the believer is to be gained. Amen. I say victory is to be gained. Can I hear a better Amen. If you are going to gain something, that means there must have been an investment already. Is that not correct? You only reap a gain when there is, where there is an investment. Now, normally we invest in the earth realm here to gain a, a, a profit here. Is that not correct? But for this battle, God is the one who invested everything that we need. Can I hear a loud and glorious amen? amen. I say God has invested everything. He invested himself into it. He invested the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, into it. That's why we are victorious forever. And you shall forever be victorious in Jesus' mighty name. I say you shall forever be victorious in Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear a loud and glorious amen? These scriptures show us some very important things for us to understand. That every child of God is ordained to walk in victory. I said every child of God is ordained to live a life of victory. And that shall be your own testimony in Jesus' mighty name. 
it shows us that the price for the victory that we are supposed to walk in has already been paid. God is not looking for you to pay the price for it. God is looking for you to reap the gain of the investment that he has already made. I see you receiving that gain in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, the victory is a gift from God, but the responsibility to walk in that victory is ours. Is somebody hear what I'm saying to you? The victory that we are supposed to walk in and that you'll be walking in from now is a gift from God. But the responsibility to walk in that victory is ours. I pray that we'll take that responsibility and begin to walk in the victory that God has ordained for our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear you loud and glorious? Amen. Amen. Come on, say that victory is mine. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, victory is yours in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Clap those anointed hands and give Jesus a big shout of praise. Give Jesus a bigger shout of praise. Hallelujah. In the book of 2 Kings that we read earlier there, we look at this uh, Shunammite woman. And uh, the Bible makes us understand, of course, um, she has seen the man of God coming and going on the road. And she said to her husband, look at this man of God. Why don't we do something for him? Why don't we set a place for him so he can refresh himself and rest every time he passes by this place? And the man listen. Thank God for good men that listen to their wives. Hello, you don't know everything. I hope you understand that. You may be the man, but you don't know everything. In fact, there are some things that God has planted in your wife that he has not planted inside you. Are uh, you hearing what I'm saying to you, people of God? You, you don't know everything. You can't be another chief of the show. There's something that she knows and that you don't know. There's some abilities that she has that you don't have. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And we've got to learn to understand that and be able to listen to our wives when they speak some things to us. And the same way that the wife has some things that the husband doesn't have, the husband also has some things that the wife does not have. And so when the husband speaks on things, you've got to learn to identify each other's strengths. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? There are some things that my wife will say, and I'll listen to her, praise God. And there are some things I'll say, and she has to listen to me. I'm gifted in some certain areas, and she's gifted in some other areas. I hear what I'm saying to you. And that's why we are in partnership, and that's why we are in a covenant together, praise God. And we walk together, and we are knitted together by God, and together we are able to make great impacts. Somebody shout, Amen. You will not miss your own testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so she said to him, come, let's set up a place for this man of God. And he listened to her. And as a result of doing that sacrifice for this man of God, the thing that they have been waiting for so many years, the miracle they have been waiting for for so many years, the prayer that had gone unanswered for so many years was answered in one instant. I declare over your life that whatever you are believing God for, the Lord shall answer you this season in Jesus' mighty name. In this month of total victory, the Lord shall visit your family in Jesus' name. The Lord shall give you the victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear a loud and glorious amen? So victory is a gift from God, but the responsibility to walk in it is our own. I pray that you will take that responsibility to walk in the victory that God has for you in Jesus' mighty name. Now they prepared a place for this man of God, and as a result of God, God blessed them. Now some years later on, the Bible makes us understand that the child grew up, and you know, as he grew up, at a point the child fell sick and died. And then the father said, you know, before the child died, he was sick, and he said, take the child to the mother. Sometimes when you see something is not working, you've got to go back to the person that carried the original vision. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, people of God? When you carry a vision inside you, no matter what you see on the outside, you're, you're pregnant, you had one that was pregnant with it. Not, you, not, you can't drop it. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, people of God? When you see people chicken out of an assignment, it's because they didn't carry the vision truly. When you see a people that truly carry a vision, in spite of the odds against, they keep on going and until they win. We shall win in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In your own life, no matter the odds against your life, I see you victorious in Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear a loud and glorious amen? He sent the child to the mother, the original carrier of the vision, the original carrier of the child, and she could not let go. Now what happened? She stood there with the child and the child died. And she said, well, the best thing I can do is to go and put him on the anointed bed. This is where the man of God lay. This is where he has been. And that means that there are some things that you do in your life. You may not see the result now, but a payday is coming for you. 
I said a payday is coming for you. She recognized that's the anointed room that that man has been praying in. That room is, carries anointing. That room carries, that's the bed that man of God has been laying down on. I'm going to place this child there. She placed that child there and took off to the man of God. I'm praying that there will be something that you do for God that will keep speaking in the heavenly realms in Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear a loud and glorious amen? God never ordained for you to walk in defeat. God never ordained for his children to suffer any type of shame in their life. You will not suffer any shame in Jesus' mighty name. Your family will not suffer any shame in Jesus' mighty name. You will not know any reproach from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you receive that, shout aloud and glorious amen. amen. Shout aloud and glorious amen. amen. And then this woman took off. She told her husband, give me the... Um, horses, give me some donkeys, give me some, one of the servants to drive it. And she told the servant, begin to drive this thing. Don't slow down for me. Drive with speed. Sometimes you mean serious business. I hear what I'm saying to people of God. Sometimes you can't take it slow. Sometimes you can't take it easy. Sometimes there's serious business in your heart. You begin to run. I pray that you'll be able to run forward with speed into what God has ordained for your life in Jesus' mighty name. Clap those anointed hands and give Jesus a big shout of praise. Give Jesus a big shout of praise. She went on that journey, and as you read through to the end of that chapter, you see that the child came back to life. The man of God came, stretched himself on the child, prayed over the child, and what happened? That child grew warm. As the child grew warm, he began to continue to pray. He paced around the room until the child began to sneeze, and sneezed seven times, and all that junk came out of him. Whatever junk the enemy has placed in your system shall be flushed out by the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever junk he has placed in your marriage shall be flushed out in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever junk he has placed in your finances shall be flushed out in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever junk he has placed in your surrounding shall be flushed out by the power of God in Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear a loud and glorious amen? This woman recovered her blessing. This woman recovered her miracle. That child came back to life. I'm declaring over your life. Everything that God has given you that looks to be dead right now shall come back to life in Jesus' mighty name. I said it shall come back to life in the name of Jesus Christ. I said it shall come back to life in the name of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands and give God a big shout of praise if you receive that. Give him a bigger shout of praise. But then this woman obtained the victory. And there are some keys that we see concerning this woman, some things that she did that enabled her to walk in that victory. And if we apply the same to our lives today, we too will walk in the victory. I see you walking in undeniable victory in Jesus' mighty name. So that's why we're looking at three undeniable requirements for victorious living. Three undeniable requirements. When we look at the life of this woman, this is what jumps up. This is the revelation that jumps out to us. And as we apply that, we'll see the same level of victory in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody ought to shout a loud and glorious amen. Somebody shout a loud and glorious amen. What are these three laws? What are these three things that we see about this woman? The first thing that we see about her and the first law and uh, requirements for victory is that if you are going to walk in victory, you must refuse to see defeat. You must refuse to see defeat. Always force yourself to see victory in every situation. You must refuse to see defeat. Praise God. I said you must refuse to see defeat. I want you to understand that what you choose to see is what you have chosen to get. What you choose to see is what you have determined to get. It's a now, I pray over your life from today, you will be seeing victory in Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear a loud and glorious amen? And why do we say this? The woman put the child there. She could see that the child was dead. Instead of going to look for a coffin, instead of going to look for the mortuary, Instead of going to look for all the, uh, you know, funeral directors, what did she do? She took the child and went to place him in a room. Hello? She said, I can't see any dead child here. He's just on break. He must come back to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She said, I can't see any dead child here. He's just taking a long nap, an unusual kind of nap. He must come back to life. I refuse to see defeat. If you refuse to see defeat in your life, you must ultimately get a victory. You will get a victory in Jesus' mighty name. I said you will get a victory in Jesus' mighty name. 
Even unbelievers have learned to tap into this truth. And they see some levels of victory in their life. How much more than children of God? If you refuse to see defeat, you must get the victory. I see somebody getting the victory this time in Jesus' mighty name. Clap those anointed hands and give Jesus a big shout of praise. What does the Bible tell us in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11 to 12? It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I will hasten my words to perform it. That's in the King James Version. In the New King James Version, it says, For I am ready to perform my word. It said, Jeremiah, what do you see? He said, I see the branch of an almond tree. And God told him, you have seen well. I, that thing you have seen, I will perform it now. Until you see it, there cannot be a performance. Until you see it in your spirit, there cannot be a performance. So refuse to see defeat. Anytime the enemy paints a picture of defeat, repaint your own picture. Anytime the enemy brings a picture of failure, paint your own picture. Anytime the enemy brings a picture of crisis, paint your own picture. Don't ignore it. Paint your own picture. Praise God. Your own picture is more powerful than the picture that the enemy paints. What we choose to see is greater than what the, end, the picture the enemy sends. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. God told him, he said, you have seen well. I will hasten my word to perform it. May there be a hasty performance in your life this time in Jesus' name. I said there will be a hasty performance of God's word in your life this time in Jesus' name. Clap those anointed hands and give Jesus a big shout of praise. Give him a louder shout of praise. What you choose to see is what you have chosen to get. It's what you have chosen to get. If you refuse to see failure, you cannot receive defeat. Do you know in the book of 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 41 to 46, Elijah went up to the top of Carmel to pray. He went up to the top of the mountain to pray. He bowed his head to the ground, put his face between his knees, and sent his servants, go and look. He said to someone, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. But the question is, couldn't Elijah himself go and look? But he did not want to see any picture of defeat. He had already painted a picture of victory inside himself. He had already painted a picture of victory when God sent the word in verse 1 of that same chapter. God told him, go and present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the earth. Verse 1, 1 Kings 18 verse 1, it says, It came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, Go show yourself to Ahab and I will send rain upon the earth. Go show yourself to Ahab. And God said, I will. so he saw that picture of rain. And so he sent his servant, and the servant came back. He said, there's nothing. He sent him again. He held on to that picture that he had in his spirit. Refuse to give up on what God has said to you. That thing that God spoke to you, refuse to give up. Keep on seeing it. You will soon walk in the reality of it. Can I hear a loud and glorious amen? amen. Can I hear a loud and glorious amen? amen? See yourself in your wedding gown. Praise God. See yourself walking down the aisle. See yourself dancing down the aisle. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. If it's twins you want, see yourself carrying twins. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, people of God? See yourself carrying them. You shall carry them in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So she held on to the picture of victory. This child is living. This child is not dead. And she went up for the man of God. So number one requirement for victorious living is that you must refuse to see any kind of defeat. The enemy is a very wicked devil. He comes in different ways. Sometimes he just paints a picture and you, people find themselves, they just see themselves sleeping on the hospital bed. Repaint a picture. Jogging around. <laughs> Hello? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Repaint a picture of yourself on the beach. Hello? Praise God. Repaint a picture of yourself flying to Florida, New York, and you know, Barbados. And just paint a good picture. Amen. Praise God. Refuse to see defeat. Refuse to see sickness. Refuse to see it. When the enemy paints one picture, repaint your own picture. Praise God. Moreover, the Lord said to, said to him, Jeremiah, what do you see? He said, I see a branch of an almond tree. And the Lord said, you have seen well. 
I will hasten my word to perform it. I am ready to perform my word. There shall be a performance of God's word in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Shout aloud and glorious. Amen. Amen. Number two fundamental and undeniable requirement for walking in victory is this. You must refuse to talk defeat. If you want to live a victorious life, refuse to talk defeat. What happened here? The man of God, the woman, and the child died. She never said the child is dead one time. Have you noticed that even when she got to Elijah, Elisha, she did not say to him, he said, well, on the child has died. She said, did I beg you for a child? The man understood. She could not bring herself to speak that the child is dead with her own mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, people of God? Refuse to talk defeat. Refuse it. Speak what you want to see. Your father in heaven speaks. Uh, you hear what I'm saying to you? God saw the earth realm. It was without form and void. And the spirit of the Lord hovered over, over the surface of the water. What did God do? The Bible says, and God said, let there be light. See what you want to see and then speak it. Refuse to speak the situation. Speak the victory you want to see. Can I hear a good amen? amen. Can I hear a good amen? amen? She never said the child is dead one time. The husband said, what is wrong? Where are you going? She said, All she could say, it is well. Sometimes things do not look like what you want to see. All you need to declare is, it is well. Praise God. Sometimes people come and ask you, all kinds of people ask you all kinds of questions. Tell them it is well. It is well. They can't help you anyway. People are only looking for something to say. Is that not correct? Looking for cheap news. You are not the news. Hello? You are not cheap news. You are making waves in Jesus' name. I said you are making waves in Jesus' mighty name. That means your own news, you won't need to say it. It will be clear for everybody to see. The news of victory, the news of blessing, the news of favor, that shall be your own testimony in Jesus' mighty name. All and on. She said, what is wrong here? She said, it is well. It is well. The man of God saw her coming. Go and ask her, what is, is it well? She said, it is well. She could not speak the situation. Refuse to speak what you are seeing. They never say the bank account is empty. Say our money is coming through. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Never say, oh, everything has crashed down. Nothing has crashed down. Everything is rising up. Amen. amen. Can I hear a good amen? amen? What you say is what you get. Do you know in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2 and verse 3, the Bible makes us understand. The company of the sons of the prophets came to Elisha and told him, do you know that the Lord shall take your master away from me today? He said, be quiet. It's a good way of saying shut up. <laughs> Hello? He did not permit them to speak any kind of defeat around him. That's not what he was looking for. He saw the picture of the double portion of the anointing. And he did not want to hear anything else. Sometimes you've got to learn to switch off everything to hear only what you want to hear. Praise God. Refuse to see defeat and refuse to talk it. You will not go down in shame in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody ought to shout a loud and glorious amen. amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs 18 and verse 21. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Do we have the New Living Translation at all? Thank you very much. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Praise God. Whatever you are saying right now is a seed that will germinate in the future. Are you pick, picking up what I'm saying to you, people of God? Whatever you are saying right now, if you understand spiritual things, if you understand spiritual things, there's no casual word anywhere. What we say day by day is a seed that will reap tomorrow. Praise God. Praise God. So if you like, be telling yourself you are going to go old. That's for you. Me, I'm growing younger. Amen. I'm growing fresher. Amen. I'm bouncing around strong in the name of Joshua. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Can I hear a good amen? Can I hear a good amen? 
You've got to be able to wake up in the morning and shake yourself. Say, fine guy. How are you looking today? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Look at yourself. Tell yourself. Even your beard is growing darker. Amen? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, people of God? Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. What you speak is what you are giving power to. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. If God said, let there be darkness, there will be darkness. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11. Praise God. Let's go there quickly. Hebrews chapter 11, let's start from verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of, vi- of things which are visible. Did you see that in your own Bible? By faith we understand that the worlds, come on say worlds. Come on, say worlds. The worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things that we see visible today were not made of things that were visible. The invisible world manifested into the visible world. Your words create your world. Are you picking up what I'm saying to you today? Your word is already creating your word. Your world, your words that you speak is already creating the world that you will see tomorrow. Refuse to talk defeat. Fight anything that wants to make you speak defeat. Praise God. I want you to understand that your words are so powerful and creative that whatever you speak, whether negative or positive, has power. I want you to understand that there's no casual words in the realm of the spirit. There's no casual word. Anything we speak has power. If you say, ah, you silly boy, and you're smiling. You know, people in this country say, ah, you silly man. Don't accept that. Reject it big time. Reject it. Train your children, because we don't know what kind of demonic teachers they may have. Hello? Train them to reject anything that is negative around them. Praise God. Every word a man speaks right now is a seed that will yield seals and uh, rewards in the future. That will yield fruits in the future. Don't speak negative. Look at your neighbor say, refuse to talk defeat. So number one, if you are going to walk in victory, is this. Refuse to see defeat. Number two is refuse to talk defeat. And then number three, refuse to act defeat. If you are going to walk in undeniable victory in life, you must refuse to act defeat. Let your actions declare victory in every situation. Let your actions declare victory. Praise God. Even when you don't have enough money, carry yourself like someone who has too much money. Uh, You get what I'm saying to you, people of God. Carry yourself with dignity. Never act defeat. Never act... The word, is this me? Oh, God, is this me? Never act like that. Act victory all the time. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Refuse to act failure. Refuse to act sickness. Refuse it. Act victory all the time. I see you getting the victory this time in Jesus' mighty name. I said I see you getting the victory this time in Jesus' mighty name. Actions are very powerful in the earth realm. Actions are the bridge between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. Uh, You get what I'm saying to you, people of God? Our actions are the bridge between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. God told Moses one day, the people were fighting the battle. Joshua was leading the army to fight the battle. And he told Moses to go to the top of the mountain and lift up his hands. As Moses lifted up his hands, what happened? The children of Israel were winning the victory. He was acting victory. The moment his hand came down, which means acting defeat. The children of Israel started suffering defeat. So Aaron and uh, Hor ran and held up his hand, and then that's how the children of Israel were able to win the victory. Refuse to act defeat any day. Refuse it. Praise God. Refuse it. What victory do you want in your life? Begin to act it. 
begin to act it. I'm not talking of crazy, foolish ways of life. No, this is spiritual reality. Our actions are the bridge between the physical realm and the spiritual realm. The things that God has for us are in spiritual forms. It's our actions that bring it from the spiritual realm to the physical realm. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, people of God? And somebody here, we are right about ready to download a mighty blessing from the spiritual realm in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can I hear a loud and glorious amen? amen? Can I hear a better amen? amen? That's why the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in their heavenly places in Christ. Somebody shout amen. amen. The blessings that God will give us and has given us are in the heavenly realms. It is our actions that downloads them from the heavenly realms into the physical realm. Refuse to act any kind of defeat. Praise God. Hallelujah. Carry yourself with a bounce all the time. Carry yourself with joy all the time. Amen. Praise God. Bounce up and jack up and begin to dance and celebrate. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Some years ago, you know, I was a student and I ran out of money and the financial pressure here and there. And I, was, I didn't know, you know, the fence of our house at the time had broken down and the place, you know, where I was staying had broken down. And the enemy came and saying, see, defeat all the way. And I just shouted, shut up! I didn't know our Iranian neighbor was outside just looking. And she saw me then. I just turned like this. That's when my eyes went. And she was just looking like, ah, is everything right with this man? I didn't care. I shook myself and carried on. Praise God. I shouted to the devil, shut up. I cannot see such defeat. I didn't come here to fail. I didn't come here to go back empty-handed. Praise God. You will never be defeated in Jesus' mighty name. When the enemy comes with anything to make you sad and dejected, jack up and begin to dance. Celebrate. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. The action you de take determines the reaction you will get. It is crazy to hope for victory when you, all you do is act defeat. Refuse to act defeat. Carry yourself. This woman said, it is well. I said, if you, it's well. She continues to Does that look like someone who was defeated? She drove all the way. Her husband never saw one tear from her eyes. She refused to act any kind of defeat. She didn't look for black cloth to tie. She didn't look for black garment to wear. Hello? She carried herself and drove all the way, and there was a victory. Somebody here, in this month of victory, I see victory coming for you in Jesus' mighty name. I said, I see victory coming for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So three undeniable laws, undeniable requirements for walking in victory. Refuse to see defeat. No matter how bad the situation is around you, refuse to see defeat. You came here for something. Keep on seeing that thing. Hello? You landed here for something. Keep on seeing that thing. Praise God. You are trusting God for your own property. Keep on seeing that property. And begin to act it. Amen. You don't have deposits yet. Go and view houses. They say for sale. Just go there. Praise God. Bounce there, dress nice, and go and look at it. Praise God. Okay, it's lovely. All right, it's nice. All right. We'll get back to you, and you go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Act it. Amen. Sometimes you need to be able to go to nice cash places, garages, and go and look at the car. Sit in it. Feel it. Amen. You are not born to suffer. Praise God. I say you're not born to suffer. Go in there. Sit down. Praise God. Sit down in the car. Feel it. Ah, good. Good. Begin to imagine yourself driving it. You will soon get there in Jesus' mighty name. Refuse to see defeat. Refuse to talk defeat. Refuse to act defeat. If you can do these three things, you will eventually get a victory. Somebody here, you are getting a victory this time in Jesus' name. Amen. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The victory is already given to you. 
It's now our responsibility to walk in that victory. Part of that responsibility is, number one, refuse to see defeat. Responsibility number two, refuse to talk defeat. Responsibility number three, refuse to act defeat. If you can take up your responsibility, you will get that victory. Let's stand up and give the Lord a big shout of praise, everybody. Father, thank you because you have won the victory for us. No situation is bigger than the victory that you have won. No situation can stop the victory that you have already given us. Thank you for the victory, O oh Lord. You won it for us 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. We can never be defeated again. Father, I pray for all your children in this service today. Anyone facing any type of challenge in their life, let the victory manifest for them now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I give you praise and I give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. Put your hands down. Close your eyes, everybody. Maybe there are some people in this place. You're saying, God, I just need help with this particular issue. I need your hand. I want to pray with you right now. Quickly raise up your hand so I can pray with you. I see your hands raised up all over. Thank you, Jesus. I see your hands raised up. Father, I pray for your sons and your daughters, oh God. That blood has never lost its power. That blood is still speaking till today. The blood of Jesus Christ. Let that blood speak for your people now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for your people lifting up their hands right now. Visit them. Before this time next week, let the victory already be in their hand in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hand down. Quickly, I want to pray for the second set of people. Maybe in this place you are far from God and you want to rededicate your life to Christ. The Bible says, but thanks be to God who gives us. The us is only the children of God. It said, who gives us the victory? The victory was won by Jesus Christ for, the, for his children. Praise God. If you are not a child of God, you can't walk in that victory. If you are far from him, you can't walk. I want to pray with you. Anyone like that in this place, you want to rededicate your life to Christ, you want to surrender your life to Christ, I want to pray for you. Anyone like that, lift up your hands and I'll pray with you. We hope you've been blessed by today's broadcast. Pastor Deji Fayoyim would love to have you worship with us at Impact Gospel Center when in the Bedfordshire area. Please visit our website where you can find more information of our weekly services and special events. We look forward to seeing you same time next week. God bless you.